is April the 1st, which means I have posted a tweet today saying that I've shaved my head. It hasn't got any likes or RTs, so I think it was seen right through. Never mind. April the 1st also means it is time again for the Buzzword-a-thon. The Buzzword-a-thon is a monthly reading challenge started by Books and Lala where you have to read a book that fits with that month's prompt. This month's prompt is space terms and I'm not a massive space person I must say but I've wanted to read this book for a while because just just for the cover. Super cute. The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. It is about two boys whose lives get uprooted because their parents become astronauts and they have to move to Houston and become part of this reality TV show that centres around the families of astronauts. So the main character Cal has just found out that his dad's been accepted into the programme to go to Mars so he has to give up his entire life and move to Houston and he's just dealing with that now. I am 39 pages in and I'm really loving it so far. Hopefully I'll be able to breeze through this and <gasps> read another book in this video. Will she do it? We don't know. Um, yeah, The Gravity of Us. It's an LGBTQ plus book about a male-male relationship and um, their parents go to space. I'm glad I like it so far because like I said, space is not my thing. I really enjoyed The Martian, but it took me a while to wrap my head around it because I'm not smart enough to read about space, quite frankly. But this doesn't seem too technical of a read. It seems that their relationship and Cal's life is gonna be what this book centers around as opposed to his father's space time. Okay, don't mind the lighting right now. It's uh, 10 past 10 at night and it's nearly bedtime because I'm exhausted. Uh, here is the progress I've made with the gravity of us. I am loving this so far. There's a, a little bit of space talk but not so much that I don't understand. I love that um, they don't beat around the bush with the main character's relationship. There's been a bit of kissy kissy already, which I'm totally here for. I love the main character's personality. He's so sassy. I feel like this book has shown me my destiny because in the last vlog I did, I was asking for radio station recommendations and mentioned that my car plays tapes and I don't have any tapes. The main character in this book collects tapes and listens to them. So I've been on eBay looking at tapes. <laughs> this book has shown me the way. It has literally given me guidance and I thank it. I've read another hundred and no, I haven't. Oh my god, I've read another sixty-eight pages of this book, and so so cute. They're in love, which I'm really happy about. It did not take them long to fall in love, and I'm just I'm not always a fan of sexual tension in books and like slow burn romances so I'm very grateful that this romance is like fast. Leon's depression is just so hard hitting and realistic because I'm reading it like snap out of it man you're in love but like as one who suffered from depression I know that that's not how depression works and like 
I know it's infuriating and frustrating and that's exactly how this book depicts it to be. Cal is an internet journalist. He is sharing his journey as an astro kid with his one million followers on this platform that's been made up for the purpose of this book that I've forgotten the name of. Flash Fame! Um, it's like a live streaming app and he's a teen journalist on it and he's sharing his journey on there. He's also exposing the adult journalists who are working with the astronauts for how terrible they're treating the astronauts. So he's kind of a hero. He's very impulsive and emotional. I also love his mum as well. I love his relationship with his mum. He kind of acts as her counsellor and her confidant and it's just so sweet to see because here you have his caregiver being vulnerable with him and instead of making her feel guilty for needing him because she's his mum and she's supposed to take care of him, he just takes care of her and that is just so beautiful to see. Something bad's about to happen and I know this because I read ahead a little bit but hopefully it's resolved soon and then we can just get more adorableness. Okay, don't mind the little girl playing with her new toy over here. Um, she wants some attention. <laughs> I finished The Gravity of Us. Uh, it took me a day longer than I thought it would because I had work yesterday. I'm so sorry about these chomping noises. She really likes her new toy. <laughs> I absolutely love this book and I was trying to find problems or flaws with it so that I could give it a lower rating than five stars because it just feels predictable at this point. This is the fourth Buzzwordathon and the third book that I'm giving five stars but it had to be done. I even loved the like NASA story which is not a Sam thing to say. All in all, adorable, wholesome, absolutely perfect, almost made me cry but we've got a handyman in the house right about now and it wouldn't have been appropriate. <laughs> so of course we're gonna have to uh, crack open another book because I have four days left of the Buzzwordathon and that was just too easy. So we jump in with another book with a space related theme. The Weight of the Stars. Now as I understand it this book is quite similar plot wise to this book just with a female female relationship. So it's gonna be interesting to see the differences in uh the characters' personalities, their relationships, how the space mission goes. This is Jess's book and she rated it five stars so I'm looking forward to it. Look at the fun little page decoration. Ryan Bird dreams of traveling across the stars but a career in space isn't an option for a girl who lives in a trailer park on the wrong side of town. So Ryan becomes her circumstances and settles for acting out and skipping school with her delinquent friends already quite different from our main character in the last book, Cal. Um, even though he is quite um, impulsive, he is still a good boy. One day Ryan meets Alexandria, a furious loner who spurns Ryan's offer of friendship. After a horrific accident leaves Alexandria with a broken arm, the girls are brought together despite themselves and Ryan learns her secret. Alexandria's mother is an astronaut who volunteered for a one-way trip to the edge of the solar system. Every night without fail, Alexandria wants to catch radio signals from her mother and now it's up to Ryan to lift her onto the roof day after day until the silence between them grows into friendship and eventually something more. How cute does that sound? Very cute. However, uh, I don't like the idea of my mother going on a one-way trip to space. Um, one way means you're not coming back, like what's that about? What are you leaving your kid for? So I'm gonna do some editing and then we're gonna see what uh, Kay Ankrum has to say. April 
April so I have today and tomorrow left to finish this book. I started it yesterday morning and I am almost exactly halfway through now. I really like how the, the pages are marked on the edge. I am enjoying this book very much. Um, I like that it explores polyamory with a character's parents. I would love to read more books with polyamorous main characters like a three-way relationship. I think that'd be really interesting. I really like the main character's brother James. He went on a sort of speaking strike when their parents died and he says absolutely nothing so far in this book and he has a mysterious baby. The main character it's taken me a long time to picture because she's not really described in this even though it's like third person so she could have been described by the narrator on like the first few pages but she wasn't but I think I've got a general idea of what she kind of looks like now. Her love interest looks like this and is described pretty much straight away which is helpful. It took me a little while to get into this to be honest because you're not given the full picture straight away so you start imagining the scenarios that you've presented and then you're made to realize oh it's set in this sort of setting. Oh, there's a baby. <laughs> it kind of pieces together very slowly, which does frustrate me a little bit because I like to know what I'm picturing, which is why it would have helped at least for me to be able to picture Ryan straight away. She and Alexandria are pretty much only just genuine friends. She was assigned Alexandria as a sort of friendship project by a teacher because Alexandria wasn't making any friends and they've sort of struggled into a relationship, a platonic relationship so far. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing how romance will develop between them. in it filming with the window behind me like an absolute idiot. I finished The Weight of the Stars. It is the 7th of April so um challenge complete. I got two books done for the Buzzwordathon but before we get into the review I just want to inform you that the gravity of us successfully influenced me <laughs> into buying tapes on eBay. I now have entertainment for when I'm delivering pizzas. Shania Twain, come on over. An absolute anthem anthology right here. I am really looking forward to work on Friday now. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about books with space related themes in the title. So I just finished this book and I was this close to doing a cry. Very very close to doing a cry. I'm gonna admit I didn't love it as much as I love The Gravity of Us but it ended so well. I think the main character's romance was a bit forced towards the end. Like it could have had more airtime and more time to develop. At first it was hard to get into. The chapters felt too short to get to know the characters um, and like more than halfway through I learned that Ryan has short hair so yet again I had to change how I imagined her. So like in my mind she was sort of a shapeshifter this whole book because I was just getting snippets of how she looked as the book went on. So that was kind of 
annoying in a way. I read a review last night in which someone said that the characters were hard to differentiate between and not that fleshed out but I think towards the end like I got to know the characters a little better and I feel like that was a nice organic way to get to know characters because you don't meet someone like and then know them like that so I think it was quite nice to get to know the characters slowly. There were absolutely heartbreaking bits but I absolutely love how it ended. Also with both books, I love how the characters' queerness is no big deal to the people around them. It's like they're out, they're fine. It's not even addressed as like a bad or anxiety inducing thing, which I absolutely love because I've read so many books about like the, the fear of coming out. And although that's valid and realistic, I just love when that's bypassed and you get instant love. I'm gonna go ahead and give this book 4.5 stars. So there we go, two books for this month's Buzzwordathon. I probably won't read two next month. I don't even know what next month's prompt is, but uh, stick around for that. I hope you have a lovely day. Let me know what you read for this month's Buzzwordathon prompt, and I will see you next time with another video. Bye.